start recording. Wow, why can't I do this? Uh, um, so I would like to know that everybody's got, uh, 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 if you have any secrets that you don't want to share with the public, don't put it in this uh, meeting. Uh, this is, we follow the, it's on the screen. Right? Or, or, or stakeholder yeah. analysis. Yeah, this one. Okay, so who would like to start this meeting? Go ahead. So I think Riza, even you can start. So anyway, I think we are waiting for our speaker. Maybe he's not here. So then anyway, we can discuss in general and uh, talk about what we can do and as, as a climate action perspective. Uh, uh, because the speaker is not joining, so we can anyway uh, cancel the meeting after some time. But if anybody want to share something or doing something in the climate action, then is the uh, floor is open. You can share something. Uh, Kavlis, maybe I can just say on the alternative Tuesday in the same time slot, uh, the uh, standards working group is still active. So if you have an interest in uh, in standards and especially uh, in the underlying ontology um, and vocabularies related to these things, uh, please join us on um, uh, please join us on that call. Uh, okay. The same okay. Okay. Next week. Yeah. Christian, you're talking about the standard working group, right? Yes. Yeah, so they, exactly. So that is that was the meeting of last week, and you'll you'll on that on that side you'll find the agenda and the link uh, in that list. As you say, we've been going for a while. Um, okay, okay. So so if if your if your interest are in the in the <clears throat> in the underlying uh, almost the conceptual structure of what anthropogenic impact accounting is and how to put that into practice. Uh, then please join us um, on that call. Okay, and uh, Akishan, can you also uh, share some update what what we are doing in the standard working group? Uh, do we uh, do we define? Maybe, maybe maybe you can go, Kamish. Maybe you can go to the wiki to to the standards working group wiki. Uh, yes, working groups, and then there's a wiki, and uh, and under that. Um, there is, if for example, if you go to that, uh, on the second one, ontology for for anthropogenic uh, um, impact accounting. So the first, yeah. So basically, we are we are creating an ontology that's based on, uh, you know, that's a, a formal representation of of uh, of what. Uh, of the phenomenon that humans that humans have an impact and that we account for that impact, and that's based on a series of clauses and a series of axioms, uh, and we are refining this and it's um, it's expressed in uh, in the L language in in the web ontology language, but you can you can do it in you know there are, we we are not in the first place. Um, we are not in first place concerned about the, the encoding because uh, you should be able to encode this thing as a database structure, as a namespace, uh, as a series of protobufs or uh, or in L. Um, and uh, uh, basically then, yeah. So these then here are our definitions. So last, you know, we, we really go through these things uh, finely and, and try to have a really uh, clean but strong underlying skeleton of, of what we're doing if i can if i if i can explain maybe in one sentence the underlying logic you yeah. know if you know in math when the romans had the roman numerals when you have roman numerals you can represent normal numbers and you can you know you can you can write you can you can do you you can get along but it limits how easy it is to do math because well, the, the the number of characters per um, per numeral differs. One is one, two is two, three is three, uh, four is two again, and five is one again. So when when Arabic numbers came in, and they had a cleaner underlying system, where for every power of ten there is one digit, it enabled arithmetic it made arithmetic much easier and and that was an absolute quantum leap it was the same thing and you could get along but it was a 
a more elegant representation. And that representation made a lot of things so much easier. And then someone came and said, why don't we put a dot? And on the other side of the dot, we just put, you know, also in powers of 10, but put the decimals. And then the whole world opened up from there. And so what we're trying to do is, is not to represent these things in something that's akin to Roman numerals, that it works more or less okay, and you can get along. That we find the simplest representation that helps us to um, to represent these things in such a way that it really um, that it really is really expressive and that you can that you can go the furthest with that so um, that's the basic un underlying philosophy uh, there's quite a, a bit of work to do um, we've also uh, I'm going to try to find it we've also uh, placed a, a um, for uh, open you know uh, enrolled for the mentorship but we are now uh, part of the unpaid for um mentor we have a mentorship proposal there so there is um, hopefully we'll get the intern and and accelerate the work quite a bit so um in a nutshell in a nutshell that is what it is i think that if you want to read through the stuff the um the the first and the second point there is uh, is maybe the what you what you should do yeah and they, they in fact they, there's the there's the alpha and there's a there's a series of prototypes as well um okay, so if yeah. you want to get into the stuff there it is okay okay so so i think maybe what we can do we can always get such, such kind of update in uh, at least our monthly call right suppose we having maybe one week one by week is a presentation and maybe next time is a some kind of update on the working groups so that is good to hear so another thing are we someone working in this carbon accounting certification working group yes, someone from here because earlier side chain and i was getting involved there so anyone managing uh something here because just like uh, elizabeth share i think people are using uh, this our deployed network for uh, this. Okay, this is what I'm now saying. A bit of background in the registration of the registration. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think we can definitely. So, this is, this is our work uh, for. Uh, here in the carbon accounting SIG. Uh, so this one. So I think if some, I think maybe, do you know someone, a question like who is working on this particular working group or is it ideal? I, I, I don't know this. So maybe we can ask uh, in the community to revamp or maybe work on the group. So even we have a GitHub repository, you can see what is the update. So, so I think there is no update in the group from last uh, one month. So, so I think I think what we can do, we can revamp this particular group, or maybe we can ask uh, Sai or the people who are leading earlier this one, and let's say. Uh, are they interested to work on it or maybe we can find out new community people or the people who are working on the or the maintenance for the, the project so elisa do, do you have any thought around it what is your thoughts because this particular project actually is a good uh, uh, technical repository we have done together even though we use the cactus here so uh it's good to know uh, like we are using the cactus here for one of the uh, implementation. So I think, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, go, go yeah. So, so uh, with uh, Peter, actually, in the last year with the Peter, we did a couple of mentorship project, and we you we integrated the cacti uh, cactus here. 
Yeah, I know. So the uh, Peter, so the uh, uh, so Peter mainly contributes to the uh, so uh, we so the uh, we do so the uh, like carbon uh, car, uh, so the uh, carbon uh, uh, carbon counting application. So uh, yeah, so the, correct. Uh, sample code. Yeah. Correct. Uh, this work. Yeah. So yes, uh, oh, yes. So, um, Stan and, and I both had trouble um, hearing him. Um, I'm on a cell phone. Maybe that's why I I don't have the I I'm I turned you. up all the way. I'm struggling to. Could, hear you could, you, could could he say that again, please? About cacti. Uh, I think uh, Takuma is saying right something, or you asking me? Tamoko. Okay, Takuma. Peter, he's one of the uh, uh, cacti maintainer. So he, he, um, no, uh, what I mean is you need to say it a lot, lot louder. Can you yell? Are you able to yell? Hmm. What type? Uh, oh, type sorry, I can, hear me? <laughs> I can hear oh, sorry, you. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, so the, uh, yeah, last year, so, the, yes. uh, so um, Peter, he's so the, uh, one of the uh, cacti maintainer. Uh, he collaborates the uh, the carbon accounting application in the uh, cacti with your so uh, uh, climate change group with uh, on the uh, carbon uh, so the uh, on cacti uh, sample code yeah mm. Mm -hmm. so uh, yeah well, so so, this, so, yeah. so this carbon application code in is in still uh, uh, still developed in a uh, cacti directory yeah yeah correct so so, so uh, Elizabeth what I was saying like uh, in the in the last year mentorship project. We use characters for the interoperability between the carbon accounting and the tokenization. In in particular, this carbon accounting uh, uh, SIG dev. So so it was what I'm asking. So uh, this particular, uh, I think this lab is not active from last one month, and and even this working group, I don't see any meetings is happening around it. So can we can we call for the community uh, who would like to? work on this thing or maybe adding the new use cases or at least maintain it or or we should go check with Sai ab about the maintainability uh, of this particular working group of this lab. Oh yeah 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 hi Bhutan how are you <laughs> oh hi hi Kamash yeah hi so, uh, are you involved nowadays in the climate action group uh, or uh, not that much? The certification uh, working group? Yeah, although we haven't been active on develop the development side. Um, mm -hmm. Sai and I have both been working on some things independently related. Um, is there an action item, something that needs to be done? No, I'm thinking because, like, suppose we already have working group, right? So maybe whatever the, like, uh, how we having the work, standard working group, I call. We could have some work, maybe weekly work, maybe we could decide, maybe monthly call to at least, or maybe let's say because if you see there is no any any update happening in the group here, or maybe uh, who is maintaining this thing, who is fixing. So can we ask for the developer in the community who can uh, work on solve these issues or uh, what is your thought? Because there are many yeah. uh, open items are there, or maybe even we don't having a, uh, uh, monthly meeting, or maybe we can define the new use cases, right? Or maybe we can involve community uh, along with us. Yeah, we can. Um, we can definitely maybe put together a working document on for for maintainers and community engagement. We still have um, regular calls. They've been a little bit less regular and structured lately for the peer programming. Um, track uh, under this working group. Um, so when I have a bit of time, it might not be until the end of this week. Uh, you know, I can think a little bit about that. Like I said, we're not active right now, but I think what you're saying makes sense to to maintain yeah. community engagement. Correct. Um, uh, I think what Sai are doing right now is sort of figuring out what's the next step. You know how to. You know how to transition this into a more practical use case, mm -hmm. um, and once we figured that out, I mean, there'll definitely be more activity. 
but coordinating some in the meantime will be will be good. Did you have any any recommendations or suggestions on uh, for anything specific, or you're just asking for us to to, up, no, to, so, to do an update? Yeah. So I, I'm just asking because we, uh, because I don't because earlier this group is co quite active, right, with this working group, and now it's not active. So maybe uh, maybe we can reduce the frequency of the meeting, but we should have something, and uh, or suppose if if we lacking the men we feel lacking the resources uh, is is a is a community or maintainer or contributor then we can ask in the ask can take help from the hyperledger foundation like uh, to maybe asking for the community or the people who can contribute or who can who can actively participate in this in this uh, working group or or maybe coming up with a new use cases like how we were doing earlier so because because this is the most even i think uh, when I was active in the technical spring committee last year, even we are thinking to uh, create this as a proper proper project, and for that we yeah. need a traction around it. Yeah, no, I recall. Um, I don't know what. The, so Sherwood was talking a bit about that with the community maintainers. Um, I never received any information back. I can follow up. I don't think Sherwood's on the call. Either. Mm -hmm. I can okay. follow up follow up with him and see see where that's at. Um, yeah, yeah. I think can for I me, sir, yeah. Just just a second, Elizabeth. Just one last point. Just trace for for me. I think right now, I'm trying to figure out how the work that we've been doing under this working group and specifically the open source project um can sort of be fit and we've been working on fitting or piecing it together with some other mainstream projects um like the presentation we had from Hedera Guardian guys and a couple other projects so that might be an avenue to explore sort of cross project collaboration that might um help structure you know sort of future development I'll think a bit about that um yeah I'll get and I'll get back to you okay thanks for raising yeah, yeah. sorry yeah, Elizabeth. yeah yeah, in the chat, um, I've been asking if we could use the offset dealer account for health data tokens as well as our carbon credits that we're selling as offsets to uh, the emitters. Who I guess what you do is when you have an emitter token that you issue to an emitter, you could also issue to them a list of carbon credits that they could purchase to offset their emissions. I'd like to see that happen. I'd like to see that um, being as it tried out as a demonstration of how it works and a video of how of how that might work. Uh, and an actual um, mm -hmm. an, an actual mentorship next year where people are actually contacting, you know, using this to using this to actually transfer health data tokens and uh, carbon credits and carbon offsets well, to the emitters the and others interested. What's the purpose of the health? Okay, there you go. Sorry, I lost my cat, here's came home. <laughs> um, what's the purpose of the, the health data token again? Sorry. Cause I know there are health health uh, platforms <laughs> like that specific to that. What's, what's the, I'm not fully understanding the connection. Uh, because there actually is a connection. Um, I have a video about it. Okay. These are 0 0.0026 uh, extra deaths per ton of carbon emitted. So uh, if a person lives to be I think it's 79 years old, the amount of emissions that they've, uh, that they've emitted in the United States on average has caused one excess death. So the we could actually do an equation between um, excess deaths and carbon emissions and then charge, you know, maybe charge the companies who are emitting for, um, it's, it's a use case, charge them for the deaths as well as the medical, you know, and then the people with their healthcare tokens could prove that they have um, healthcare before and after being exposed to the pollution in an environment and then we would have a polluter payer app or a perpetrator payer app where the person who actually caused the healthcare damage would be the person who, or the company or the, or the individual who actually has to pay for it. 
uh, and it would that would be a great way to disincentivize um, emissions, a great way to incentivize people stopping emitting uh, if, if they find out that even if they just find out that they're causing the death and if they have to pay for the health damages over. Yeah, that's that's really interesting idea. Um, it's a little it sounds a little scary to me, though. But it's interesting. Um, the the use case you talked about trading carbon tokens that's pretty pretty easy and a demo video for that should be pretty easy. I think what would be interesting is you know in a sandbox environment assigning people roles for issuing credits. You know, mock as if they were mock representing a um, like a credit issuer, like a carbon offset issuer, and then enabling them to trade it just so people can get a feel for for how it functions in the Web three space. You know, using the functionality of the wallet other wallets and stuff like that so we can talk we can look into that i mean if that will be useful for the community um the healthcare stuff and emissions causing deaths i'm not really sure how to think about that uh because it's yeah it's a little bit it's, it's a scary idea um deaths are deaths are serious issues um there are a lot of causes for death um yeah yeah, I think I'll just leave it at that. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know how much more I can address it. <laughs> Was there anything else uh, what, on the call scheduled for the call today? How much? Yeah, no, no, I think. So anybody has any other thoughts? So I'm okay. So any new one who joined first time? introduce uh, otherwise we can wrap up because the today's presenter not joined the call so we don't have any well, Bertrand, Bertrand Roux has just joined could you please uh, bring us up to date Do it. is there a scheduled call today yeah so today is there is one call scheduled uh, by Siddharth but he can join. Have you you haven't heard from him? Sorry, sorry. You haven't heard from him? Did he confirm that he's no. present? No. Yeah. So actually he he didn't join. So we had a call. Uh, just one minute. Uh, so it didn't come up. So this is a presentation today, but he didn't join. So anyway, we didn't have any agenda to discuss. So maybe. Oh, this is uh, Siddharth. Okay, yeah, no, I had been in touch. I haven't heard from him. Um, okay, yeah, that's that's a good. I didn't realize that it was scheduled for today. Sorry, I've been uh, been really preoccupied with two other projects. Um, yeah, I uh, I know Sherwood had scheduled that with him. Let me um let me check with him right now just to see what's going on. I can message him online. Um so actually he's supposed to join today present. When was the last time you spoke to him? Don't, don't know. Uh so uh Sherwood actually talking to him. Sorry, yeah, sure would have scheduled him to present. Um, is, uh, sorry, just for background for people, Siddharth is a PhD student in the UK. Mm. Um, yeah, who's working on, uh, yeah, sort of state um, as a presentation. That'll suggest a stakeholder analysis. <laughs> Let's see. Correct. So if he didn't join, then we can uh, wrap up today. Yeah, maybe we'll just wrap, wrap up if he's not here because. Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry okay. about sorry about that, guys. Um, okay. I wasn't I wasn't aware of that. <clears throat> okay, so no worries. I think maybe we can invite him next time. So uh, maybe I will talk to David and uh, say good about the revamping, or maybe how to get involved, or maybe ask for the new volunteers or people, or maybe new ideas for the carbon accounting and certificate working group because making it active is important. 
because it is the most active working group and even this program, carbon accounting uh, lab is going to be main main project because the TSC is considering uh, towards that one. So yeah, let's... so there's one thing to, to to mention on that, and I'm going to expl explore that. So we Sherwood and I attended the um, open source summit in Vancouver at the beginning of the month. Um, and I had a quick interaction with, I think it's Dan Brown from the Linux LF Energy or LFX Energy. Um, mm -hmm. They have a track on carbon accounting standards. Um, now it's outside of the Hyperledger group and the blockchain, blockchain side. Um, but I've been trying, I've been looking to engage with them and that may be a way to sort of formalize or, or structure uh, community engagement because it's a sort of sister to Hyperledger, right? Under, under the Linux Foundation. Um, so if you do talk to um, David, uh, maybe, maybe raise that and see if he has any thoughts on that. Um, but I will be reaching out to Dan, Dan Brown from the LFX Energy on my own as well to just, just to let him know. So just for, for people on the call, if they're interested, the initiative I'm referring to, and I'll just share before we end the call, just so we could share something maybe useful for the group, I'll share a link. Um, a second. And when you contact him, will you please invite him to the climate accounting standards working group? Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be that would be good. I'm not sure if he's engaged with the community yet. Um, that would be great. Where is this? Yeah, okay. So thanks for the discord. So um, can I ask um, Kamlesh, are you the person who's going to create a meeting notes page and enter the notes into the wiki for this so, group? Yeah, so I do and Sairwood do. So this is done by Sairwood. So he must be communicating. Even he told me today he's going to present, but I don't know why he didn't join. So when Sairwood mentioned me, he was going to join. And are you able to copy from the chat? Yeah. I'm, I'm not. not. <laughs> no, no, I think anyone can copy, right? It's not like that. Anyone can copy, you just need to have a Lindy Linux Foundation ID. And then you can do it. So there's no any restriction um, around it. Are you are you able to use the analytics robot who's here taking notes? I'm not. Okay. No, Does I mean, that bot provide yeah. enough notes that you could actually copy those notes and paste them into your wiki? Uh yeah, I think I can copy right. Yeah, I can copy here. Yeah, it's it's copied. So there's no issue. And and you can edit the page, right? You have the edit access here. When you edit, you can edit it. Okay. So anyway, yeah. So then we can then so thank you for today's call. Uh we will connect next time. Thank you. But wait, 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 don't close the meeting. Be oh, wait, I'm the host. <laughs> I'm not going to close the meeting until everybody's had a chance to go through the chat and yeah. click on some of the links. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the link I shared, it's just from the LFX Energy. It's the carbon data specifications. So it's it's meant for interoperability of energy data sources used to calculate emissions data. I think, yeah, I, I specific to the energy sector, but maybe of interest to the standards group so do what do what you may with that um i will check back with sherwood and, and siddharth and see what happened and um if this slot's open for two weeks from now um we'll schedule that all Bertrand, right while you're mm -hmm. at it Bertrand, will you please ask him another favor will you ask him to please um put this particular web page that you've linked us to into compliance with California internet privacy law that requires that you have options for do not track and do not sell my information because it is out of compliance. 
GDPR. Well, it could so be GDPR European. as well, right? Yeah, I'm not that sure if that aligns one, with California standards. Yeah. Okay, I will. Um, I will. I will mention that to Mark. Uh, sorry, to to Dan. Um, okay. Yep, we'll do. Thanks, Elizabeth. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, um, I guess have a great week, everyone. Thank you. You too. Did I arrive too late, I guess, Elizabeth? <laughs> um, well, yeah, I hope this isn't Siddharth because everybody's been waiting for Siddharth this whole time. And um, I just, I'm leaving the chat open so that people can, um, can, uh, oh, see the chat was, open. the chat has a lot of um, links in it. And I'm going through trying to click on the links and find out what they're talking about. Um, we have Fireflies and Read AI both taking notes here. And I don't know why, but I think maybe there's a competition to see which one they should keep and which one they should uh, do away with. But basically today I asked, uh, a whole bunch of people asked for more um, features in the, uh, the product that's being developed. And actually one of the, the maintainers showed up at the end of it and uh, told us that he will uh, get back to do do uh, this. What's going? We're, we're being recorded um, still. So uh, he's told us about Dan Brown. Who? I mean, I just found um, some information about him, and actually, it's in LinkedIn. Um, he's a, he's a Linux Foundation. Um, so that's the the the. Where the Hyper Hyperledger Foundation was spun off from that, because the Linux kernel is a Linux operating system, which is completely different from the Hyperledger distributed ledger technology. It's Web two versus Web three, so um, that's why they had to. I believe that's why they had to spin it off, and uh, and I could. One of the things that I'm doing is I'm asking if people would, would um, do this te uh, test the network that they see they we produce this group over the past two years has produced um, a product that will actually work and I've tried it out a couple of people tried it out and I'm asking more people to try it out including you you have to have a wallet maybe a metamask wallet i'm not sure i do have a metamask wallet so it worked for me um but let me put a copy of that into the chat so you could see so you can yeah, go I to have a metamask okay so then right here you can go to that link and see the video on how to do it and then there's a a link under the video where you can go and actually try it for yourself and uh, use your MetaMask wallet to register and then um, try to use it to, to uh, it, it try to get an offset account, offset um, dealer account so you can become an offset dealer 
and you can trade your own carbon credits. Interest. And this is an open source project. So that means anybody in the world can look at the actual source code and see what they're getting into. And there's so there's nothing hidden. Uh, there's nothing concealed. There's no, they don't have to hire an attorney. All they have to do is just read the code for themselves and they'll know exactly what they're buying. And they'll know they'll know exactly how they're going to get it. And they'll know exactly what they can rely upon. They, they, they'll be able to trust you as the offset uh, dealer to uh, it, in, a, in a completely transparent fashion, providing your carbon credits to them so they can offset their emissions. And they Absolutely. already have they already have this huge database full of em major emitters like Chevron, and they, they track how much they're emitting, how much methane, how much carbon dioxide. But do they emitting. buy? That's the question. The question what is, is if they emit, but do they buy? Do they do yeah, the offset? Right. right, so here's <laughs> the thing. And do they buy at the scientifically proven true cost price? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's where I step in, and I'm I haven't been able to sell anything because you know the market's so um, destructive of the environment right now. Um, so what's going on with uh, the, this Chevron and all these people is that we can issue, or we can hire an issuer, or they can hire an issue. So we can, and the issuer can actually issue a carbon emissions token for their emissions. So now we have on the ledger. We have how much carbon credit, our carbon credit tokens and their carbon emissions tokens. And all they have to do is say, oh, sure, we'll swap. And then they, they use their public key. And then we use our public key and automatically, instantly, the swap is made. Mm -hmm. So all we need is for them to come on and, and use their private key. We've already done all the work for them. We've, we've created their emissions tokens so they know exactly how much emissions uh, they need to offset because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that the acre credits um of of the hundred million there's 25 million that are tokenized uh on the on uh, uh i believe it's ethereum but i'm but i'm not 100 percent sure which blockchain they are on i can find that out is the governor the issuer of those carbon credits um so uh it's the cdsa it is the acri um uh, certifier of of uh social development it's the Certifier of Social Development and uh, and the Environmental de Development in Acre. It says translate it from Spanish. Uh, yeah, th yeah, that's the Portuguese. Uh huh. Yeah, that's Portuguese, the Portuguese. Sorry. Uh huh. The the translation. Okay, and so that's that's a corporate body. That's not an individual, so it doesn't meet my standards. And yeah, it's but a it would, government. It it's a governmental. Uh, they they created it specifically to manage the carbon credits of the state. The governor put that into implemented that into law. Yes. Okay, so it's a legal body that is just as legal as Chevron, for example, and so could do that swap. Correct. Okay. So if you find out what chain, if they're already minted, if they're already on chain, find out yes, what chain they're on. If they yeah. aren't, you could find out where they're pinned, if they're pinned anywhere, like a, you know, an open sea or wherever you can pin it somewhere and then ask the person who needs the offset to mint it. Actually, the, the issuer so that who's paying for the gas fees for it to be minted on Ethereum, for example, would that be the the government? You know, is, is the governor going to dish out of his own pocket money for gas fees, which could run into millions of dollars, or is 
Chevron going to have to fork that over? If it's on Ethereum, it might be very expensive. Right. Yeah, because we're it's talking just, about 100 million credits, exact. Well, 25 right, million the, tokenized. The, the transfer of those credits would be would could would be expensive on some chains and would be free on others. I've heard, but I haven't tried them out. Someone who who joined today said uh, Lanaya Nelson is uh, mm -hmm. one of the ecosystem um, maintainers. I think she is for the Linux Foundation, mm -hmm. and I had written to one of her cohorts a couple of days Friday, I think it was, asking mm -hmm. them to attend this meeting, and she says um, she's happy to engage, see where she fits in her background in the energy space and uh she can send the, this group into some big energy corporations uh, such as orsted and others looking to tackle generating standards um and is happy to help with outreach marketing and content so she'd be like the person who could uh do this deal um broker this deal between um Acre and uh, Chevron, for example. Awesome. To explore possibilities in the insurance space too, um, to grow the SIG, but there's already a, an insurance group on Hyperledger, it's a separate group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, here's a, a, one of the big energy corps that is trying to offset their emissions. I have the link right here that she gave to me. I'll put it in the chat so you can see. Um, so this could be a customer I'm saying for you. Did you get the link in the chat? I did. Yes. You have to click on do not sell my, informa my, my personal information and then you have to go to the button and turn the button off and confirm my choices. so that they don't sell your personal information. Oh, AES? Right. Okay. Ah, they're uh, a Fortune 500 yeah. energy leader, mm -hmm. championing, a championing, championing a sustainable future through smart green solutions. So I guess trading carbon credits might be one of those because what you can't demand, I mean, there, there are individuals who are so disabled, they cannot um, offset their own emissions and they have to be able to by offsets to offset their emissions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody yesterday sent me a list of the largest polluters, and now I'm trying to find it. Oh, um, yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, 771,000 individuals are responsible for 48% of the world's pollution. So I'd like to get a list of those individuals. Because so we need to put them on, into I, this. I imagine they're all billionaires, right? <laughs> Flying no, around in private I jets. No? <laughs> I don't know. I, they have to be. 771 million, 771,000 billionaires. Oh, that many? No, no, no. Yeah, there's all, uh, uh, I didn't know they were that many. I thought it was 771. Uh, uh, yeah. These are individuals that um, I got this from a book by um, Mark Dunley, who's the head of the Eco Action Committee at the Green Party of the United States. And he wrote a book on it. And I, I've been asking him for that list, but 
It is not forthcoming. I'm not sure if anybody actually knows their names. Seven is seven hundred seventy-one thousand. So, because uh, there's sixty million under sixty million millionaires in the world. So I guess oh, so they could all be millionaires at least. Right. Right. So that's another, yeah. that's an idea that we need to add to uh, the car. Maybe I'll add this to the meeting notes for today is that we are looking for a list to add this list to the, to, so we have a list right now, Chevron, um, you know, Exxon, all, we have a list of the major polluters that who are energy producers. So next we would have an, a list of all of the major polluters who are individuals and then we could then we could implement my standard that's based upon individuals and as well as the corporate standard and, um, see if I can paste into the chat here's my reference Nope, I'm wrong. 771 million individuals responsible for 48% of global CO2 emissions. So it isn't in the thousands, it's in the millions. That seems very high. Yeah, well, look at this. And the, the bottom 50% are 3.8 billion individuals responsible for 12%. So you know what I think they're doing? I think that what they what they're doing when they come up with this list is they're 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 talking about just their scope one emissions, just their personal emissions, their their car that they drive is how much polluting, their airplanes, their yachts, et cetera. They're not talking about the decisions, the emissions that are caused by the decisions they make for the corporations they own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, if the corporation so now, pays for the jet for the jet that it's not included on, as an individual. <laughs> I, right, because it belongs to the corporation. So it's the corporation's emission, even though it's the CEO who's flying in it. Uh -huh. and yeah, that we need to know that. So whose scope one emissions is that? And if if it's the individual's scope one emissions, great. But if it's corporation scope one emissions, then that needs to be attributed to all of the employees for the corporation who use that jet or all the employees who help pay for it or all the employees who are getting funding from the use of that jet. See, there are so many different ways to, for an accountant to go through this. And that's one of the challenges for this, this group, this climate accounting group. So this is one list from 2019 of the top 20 companies uh, that issue uh, emitters. Um, How nice. It, it, it's in Portuguese, but you know, the, the company Petro names are China, there. Coal yeah. India. Royal Dutch Shell in Africa. No, oh, no, Holland. I thought oh, I thought Royal Dutch Shell had it, operations in Africa at the Delta, the Niger Delta. So yeah, you're saying you know where's the United States in this? Abu Dhabi, Emirates, Arabes, Kuwait Petroleum, Iraq National Oil. Total SA in France. There, Angelia Sonatrack. Where's Angel Angelia? Um, which, Ar Argelia. Is that Argentina? Ar 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 um, Algeria. Algeria. Wow. BHP is it in uh, Australia? Is, uh, Ar Argelia, A R G E L. I'm not looking at it. A R G E L I A. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's Algeria. Algiers. 
that's Algiers, right? Is that the same country? Mm -hmm. Well, Algeria is is uh, the capital is Algiers, I believe, of Algeria. And another list. Don't see it. Energy death numbers. Oh, this is a cool um, our world and data. I love these graphics. Um, they're so much fun. So I'll put this in the chat as well. It's one of the things that I was mentioning why we need the individual standard is individuals don't understand that that the average Americans, United States citizen, um, if they live to be 79 years old, their average emissions have killed one person, just you know, caused one excess death. And if you click on this, hopefully it still works, this link. Um, oh, my oh, well, here we go. Um, I see policy. I guess you, you're not allowed to, uh, I want to manage my preferences and the nest, oh, here we go. Necessary cookies and analytic cookies. That's all they have. They don't have any other kinds of cookies. Okay, so um, summary, all energy sources have negative effects, but some of them cause death. Death rate from accidents and air pollution. Coal is the number one dealer of death. <laughs> Then oil, then natural, then biomass, and natural gas. You see, um, what are the cleanest sources of energy? Yeah, I just got confirmation. It is uh, Ethereum. Okay, Ethereum. Thank you. So somebody's paying enormous gas fees, um, probably for uh, for transferring those carbon offsets. And that we, we should find out who that is because if if that is the taxpayer of Akri, then you've you've got a case on your hands. For the gas fees. Um, yeah. Maybe that's why they only tokenize a twenty-five percent of them. Right, maybe so. That's all they could afford with all the taxpayer money they could loot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because but it should it was be a, the individual. Mm. Go ahead. But it was a, 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 another company that did the tokenization for them. It wasn't uh, the state of Acri that. Uh, that tokenized it. It was a private company. Okay, so maybe the private company had investors do that to yeah. pay for that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm putting on the screen share here. Death rate, here you go, death rate from accidents and air pollution. Where are the accidents? Well, maybe it's all an accident. It was right. accidental that we came, that we decided to use this type of energy instead of bicycles. And <laughs> uh, I know where I saw the, it, it was on my LinkedIn today. Somebody posted all the different you know, investments by the energy companies and the and the profits from each segment, like solar, wind, and uh, 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 and oil, like everything else was, uh, I'm going to find it. Death rate from air pollution from coal. And the Chinese are still using coal in their hibachis. 
to cook their dinner every day. And in the United States, of course, it's only used on, as far as I know, on holidays like Memorial Day, Fourth mm-hmm. of July, where people barbecue and they use coal briquettes and pollute the air that way. Yeah. So I guess if you bought coal briquettes in, in the store, then uh, the cash register would automatically send that emissions information to blockchain to put it on your ledger for your emissions, even though you may not burn that coal, there may, there may be no other way to show who burned the coal. So if you purchase that coal for somebody else, for somebody's party, you bring it to a party and everybody gets to eat whatever got grilled. Uh, you're still, since you purchased the coal, it's still your emissions. Mm-hmm. Because there's no other way to, you know, there's no way to, to automatically uh, put it on blockchain that I know of. Mm-hmm. From the cash register to the blockchain. One easy swoop. All you got to do is enter your private key. And you can do that using your, your handprint or your thumbprint or your iris or whatever you want at the cash register. Right. As long as you've given your consent ahead of time in a document that could be like one of those um, Jarrett documents. And you might have to do that in one day in order to become an offset dealer because uh, they might want to track want to track you and make sure that you've offset all your own emissions before you uh, can issue offsets for somebody else. That's science fiction. Right. Well, I haven't owned a car since 2013. Um, I walk and bike most places. When it fit, have to go far away, I will fly, but I used, I, I definitely, my carbon footprint is low. And um, so there are many different types of charcoals. So um, the pol- very polluting charcoal is uh, what's, taken out of the ground and it's full of uh, sulfur and heavy metals and whatnot. And the stuff that uh, is used for barbecue, um, in most places doesn't have that in the United States, it's very common that they add like lighter fluid to the charcoal. And to me, this is disgusting because the food tastes like, uh, you know, like if you you poured uh, gasoline on it, you know, I I don't know how people use that stuff. Um, so here it's, it's, uh, usually, uh, made, uh, from pine or, or, uh, eucalyptus, uh, um, so, so it's, it's cleaner, um, than that, than that, uh, charcoal. And then the coconut charcoal is, is very clean, um, doesn't smoke and doesn't ash. So there is uh, a difference between, you know, good charcoal and bad charcoal, even though they all do emissions. Okay. going through my LinkedIn. It was here early in the morning. (laughs) I was like, oh, man, I don't know why I didn't. 
save it. So, oh, I know. I saved. I have, must have a hundred saved. Uh, yes. Here it is. Well, Anaya got back to me already, so I just told her that the deadline is tomorrow to ask for funding. Helen was at the meeting, remember, um, mm -hmm. yesterday. So uh, I just I sent all of that yesterday to um, who I thought were the higher ups, all the higher ups that I have access to. You know, I mean, maybe I could go on my LF Linux Foundation wiki page and. I tried looking up Erica Bierbauer and for some reason she's not listed. They're like, it looks like thousands of people listed at the Linux Foundation and with their emails listed right there, but Erica Bierbauer is not on that list. Mm -hmm. So Aldi and Donnelly from, from it was the, uh, she, she was the, um, the co-founder at Nori accepted the, uh, um the uh my linkedin so oh nice let's, let's see if we get response from her wow that is so nice yeah, yeah. is she's a co-founder mm -hmm. nice i um I, I I heard saw a talk at Duke University. It was being given by a male co-founder. So, I, I correct. I don't so who's on that talk? So that is Ross, probably Kenyon okay. from Nori. It's him and and her. So I got um, emails back from David Boswell. He's sort of one of the people who helps run Hyperledger. Um, mm -hmm. And he said that um, that he can write a letter of support, but not a letter of intent. Right. So he, has, he has some authority. Awesome. Um, now, it, see, it could be that Benny World, remember Anasuya, she was on that call yesterday. It could be that her company can. Um, I actually sent her everything yesterday. I'll, I'll, I, I went through all of the questions that you have to answer for the letter of intent, and I, I provided answers to all of them except for who's going to be the administrator of the project, because um, that have, have to be somebody with the authority to enter the portal, as far as I know. Um, and so, 
Uh, I got an a email back from her today saying she's going to consider um, being the company that actually does that administrative role. Mm. And in well, that case, then Hyperledger, then David Boswell could write a letter of support for her. So that would be useful because at Benny World is, I think, is a startup, right? I, I don't know how. Uh, in other words, they don't have, um, what's it called? Um, kitchen table re not recognition. What do they call that one? You know, uh, name recognition. Uh -huh. So I know, but Corey was saying that they, they prefer to, to work with companies that have name recognition. And so Hyperledger does. So if they give a letter of support, it might help any world. Right. Oh, here you go. Um, David Boswell just sent me an email saying that he's sending part of my email. Copying part, what is copying? Carbon copying? Oh, the Happy Ledger Foundation is not set up to do this uh, to, to uh, receive funding and also apply for funding. He says, okay, in case it looks like you're wanting the Hyperledger Foundation to pay stipends, receive money, and also apply for additional funding. The Hyperledger Foundation is not set up to do any of these things, but who who's paying the stipends? And if it isn't the Hyperledger Foundation, all right, for individuals. The Maybe the Linux Foundation, the Parent Foundation. Yeah, perhaps. Oh, so who did he send this to? I click on reply all. He sent it to nobody. He just sent, oh, plus one. Ah, uh, he didn't send it to anybody. He just copied it, copied it and pasted it and then sent it back to us. I see, so what he's doing, he, he's starting a letter, he's starting a, um, email, what's it called, red, to show that he responded. So it's going to be up to Binny World then, since they haven't yet. Oh, but they're located in India. Oh, I don't know if you can. I think you have to be in the United States. Do you have a, a, a United States employee identification number? I I just have a social security no. Yeah, so um I don't have one. I haven't applied for one. I'm not I'm not even sure if I want to incorporate California or Delaware or where if I want to even play that corporate game. I've done it before and it's tough because you have to have an attorney. No. You I mean, to. you do. You yeah, you do, but so, so the most inexpensive state to incorporate in is wyoming um the the yearly uh, renewal fees are the lowest and there is zero corporate income tax in wyoming what i'm saying is every corporation has to have a, an, an attorney to represent it in court so you have to get the, you have to get the attorney ahead of time because if you're slammed with a lawsuit on day one, you have to already well, have the yeah attorney. you can't yeah they can't sue you on the day one but um uh so there are a bunch of sites that you pay like uh it's like five six hundred bucks and <laughs> uh there's a ninety nine dollar fee that uh uh and they're all attorney offices you know if you google uh wyoming 
uh, corporation. Um, and, and they'll be your registered agent. Um, I set up a company yeah, for but my not your attorney. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. That, not your attorney. Okay. A registered <laughs> agent is not an attorney. It's, it's just anyone can be a registered agent if you have a domicile. Correct. If you yes, have an address, but if you have a place they are attorneys. But what I'm saying is they are, uh, usually they are attorneys. Is there a state in the United States where you can actually represent your own corporation in court? Well, anybody can represent themselves. Yeah, you. No, you, no, you're... you cannot represent your corporation in in most and all the states I know about. Maybe there's a state where you uh, could go that, to court and represent that's... your corporation. You, I'm, I'm almost 100% positive uh, that you are able to do it. Um, yeah, yeah, I know I'm able, but am I legally permitted? <laughs> yes, yes, you are. No, the courts do not permit the CEO mm -hmm. of a corporation to represent the corporation in the states that I know about. The C... Okay, but you're talking about corporate. Uh, okay, so all well, we, if no, you we, are the owner, maybe you couldn't be the CEO. You'd have to be like the president or the secretary or something like that. As far as I know, you have to be a an attorney licensed in the state to represent a corporation in the state. If, if you're not, then you can't represent a corporation, anyone's corporation. So you can't represent your own corporation because you're not a, a licensed attorney in your state. Mm. That's the law. I mean, in some states, I don't know if it's all the states. So uh, yeah, I, don't, I just, think that sounds like uh, a, a state when you're state in, by state you can law, do it without right. hiring an attorney owner yeah you can, you so can do it well you, like you definitely can state, do it I, i'd like to know what state you could do that in because i i don't know of any, and um I, I, because if you it, i mean basically it would be uh you know why would a corporation hire a non-attorney to represent it you know well, you wouldn't hire. You're the you're the owner. Well, now, okay, it's uh, you could. I mean, it's possible that you could ask the court for a what's it called, a, um, an exclusion to be excluded from. There the is law. no legal requirement to retain a lawyer to incorporate a company. Where does it say that? Oops, I got the Google. Can you, I, I Googled, can you open a corporation without an attorney? Oh, you can open and close a corporation without an attorney. You can do whatever you want, except to represent it in court. Okay, can a corporation... Uh, can, uh, can you take this offline? Because I wanna, I, I wanna stop recording. So that yeah, people yeah. don't have to, because you know it's the end of end of the meeting. Sure, sure. So um, I'll meet you somewhere else, and I'm gonna end the meeting. All right, clubhouse. Um, okay, very cool. Thanks for the link. I got that last link. <laughs> Corporations can, can act through Asia. The Quinnet represent itself. They're more through a person of doing. Yeah. Okay. So if you go to court, then you will need an attorney. Got it. Okay. Um, I'm going to end the meeting now. And thank you very much mm -hmm. for joining us. All right. Ciao, ciao.